This colony here was in diapause from October, mid-October to mid-February of 2016. So they are now slowing down and it is July. So that gives them about five and a half, five months of growth time, which is a little bit low, but they just seem to cycle through really fast. All their pupae are closed and they're doing fine. They're just not feeding anymore and their uh, larvae is all in the same stage. So here you can see I, I, I got a little too close with the light. They didn't like it. They went kind of crazy, but it gives you a chance to see this uh, stage of the larvae's first instar. So, you know, they're very small and they stayed this way for several weeks. Uh, no other pupae growing. So I just decided, okay, it's time to give them another diapause period, even though it's July. Um, maybe I took them out a little too early. Um, but this year we'll give them about six months and see how it goes and uh, you know that will be cool to have a colony um, that's waking up during the winter um, give me something to do while the rest of my colonies will be sleeping for the most part so this is a really fun species uh, I've got several colonies of these that are in the same stage three of them now in the refrigerator uh, at 40 degrees for about six months So this is a really fun species, Prinolapis in Paris, uh, they're called the winter ant. This is seven queens and two workers. Six of these queens are from this year's nuptial flight back in March, and then the other queen and two workers joined them uh, from two years ago. This colony um, is just dwindling down. I haven't quite figured out how to get them um, back in shape. Um, so I, I think the best thing was to do is just add these all together and we'll see how it goes. But uh, they're they're growing fast. And we got Solenopsis Invicta. Uh, this is my going to be my first uh, real attempt. I've always kind of shied away from seriously trying to raise them. Um, this is going to be my first attempt at a uh, colony and we'll see how it goes. It's a really good start for this queen. Um, at this point, all these workers have been closed now and uh, they've got a good pile of eggs going um, but here in the video you can see they're they're clinging to those pupae um, and the queen is is really active they have not start started climbing up out of, out of this plastic container here that they're in uh, thankfully i'm not really looking forward to those first few stings um, so anyway this is really going to be interesting to see how this turns out for me um, this is formica subsericea in an Adam C formicarium. Um, only caught one of these queens this year. Usually you can catch three or four without even trying. There's so many of these that fly. Um, if you're out, outside at all, you run into them on tabletops and walls and sidewalks. Um, so this, this queen is starting off really well. Um, she's really, she has a great temperament moving her in here uh, from her original container was really easy. I just put her on the center island after taking the top off. She climbed down into the tunnel, then I placed her eggs down into the uh, on the screen and she never ran off. A uh, beautiful little queen. 
So these colonies can get rather large. I'll show you uh, another uh, year old colony here in just a second. But this is also the species of my largest colony um, in a four sided nucleus. So this is a year old Formica subsericea colony in a spiral inception chamber. Uh, I really like this design. Um, it's got that center chamber, it just gives them a lot further to travel into the center chamber. They're not really thrilled about being disturbed. Um, usually they're all packed tightly in that center uh, chamber there, but they're spreading out trying to protect the queen. She's hiding down there right here in this little nook. Um, but this is a fun little colony. They're growing fast. They only had a handful of workers at the start of the season back in spring. And um, they don't look like they're slowing down at all. As a matter of fact, right now they've got two of these workers have freshly laid batches of new eggs. Um, nice little piles. And they've got a bunch of pupae as well. So this is a Campanotus pennsylvanicus. What I'm trying to do with this video here in the next minute or so is, is showing you the differences between this and Campanotus chromaides, which comes up a lot, especially in the east coast of uh, the United States. So you, the best way I can tell them apart is the Campanotus pennsylvanicus. She's like really shiny. Um, you can't see any visible hairs on her back, and I don't know if they're there up under a microscope or not. But for the, from the naked eye, she almost has that black widowy spider kind of shininess to her, uh, especially on the thorax and the head. And this is Campanotus chromaides. You see, they're much duller. Um, and, you know, they're just, they don't have that same deep, deep black shiny appearance. Um, and then they've got a lot of red on their legs as well and under the, um, on the gasser, uh, underneath, you know, they, they, Eventually this queen will become really dark and she won't have any red on her if she's like all the other queens that I've kept in the past. But uh, she's still an, a young queen, so to speak. You know, she's only been uh, around four or five months. Um, so, you know, this is a young colony growing up in a devolved chamber. Um, these these devolved chambers do really well for Campanotus. So um, this is Formica pallidifolva really beautiful former cans they are so fast um, zipping across the pathways around here all summer long uh, the queens fly before formica subsericea typically early in uh, early to mid-june um, is when I've found them around here and this colony is doing really well right now they've actually just come out of a ball that they've been in for the past four or five weeks and They've spread out all of a sudden, so I, I take that usually as a sign that there's going to be some egg laying activity uh, pretty soon, and then um, hopefully we'll see them do another little growth spurt before their diapause period begins here in another few months, uh, two to three months. Um, this is July, and you probably expect them to start sleeping around October. This is my Brachymermex colony. You can see the queen darting off there. Um, I have two Brachymermex colonies. This one is three years old. Just amazing brood growth in, in short times with these ants. And you can see all the pupae there. Um, the ants are just clustered all throughout this inception chamber. It's time to make them something bigger. Um, but they're a lot of fun. They, they're very active. This is a Campanotus cremates colony. This is um, one of the species, and we're showing just various pictures of our ants here while I'm talking. So the Campanos cremates is has been like a breakthrough for us this year because we've had a lot of difficulty getting them to second year stages before and now we've got maybe half a dozen to maybe six or eight colonies going right now. I'd have to go check but three of them are already in the refrigerator like I said earlier um, moving into their second year and we're happy with the success. It's been a um, somewhat of a breakthrough for us as I said and hopefully we can share that knowledge with you guys um, going forward with some of our um, tips about raising Campanotus uh, species they're all going to be a little bit different but um, we can definitely help you out specifically with Campanotus cremates what helped uh, us get through that um, difficult time period uh, 